This is Sweetie Pie, the ranch mink, and she is your host for this event. She's going to show you first her abdominal muscles, which have been dissected for us already, and some other features that are associated with those abdominal muscles. The first one, and you really need to locate this one before you do any other dissection on this mink, is called the linea alba. The word linea alba means literally white line, and compared to the rest of this animal, there's that white streak of connective tissue running right in between two big muscle pairs. Now that muscle pair on either side of that linea alba, which extends from the linea alba to just right about here, and then on the other side to the other side there, those are called the rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis muscles run from Oh, way up here at the sternum, at the base of the sternum, all the way down to the pubis. On either side of the rectus abdominis, and you see this one's been peeled several times because Sweetie Pie has been a very helpful mink over the years. <laughs> she will not die. Is the external oblique muscles. These are external abdominal obliques. And they get their name because they're on the outside, and their fibers are running at a slant, which means oblique. You can see the direction of the fibers right there. And they're on the abdomen, so the external abdominal obliques. Now, gently, to, to get these loose, I just kind of teased at the edge of the rectus abdominis muscle and pulled that back. Underneath there, I've got two other muscles that are showing up and that we have to know. The one immediately underneath with fibers also running at a slant, but this time running upwards, and they end in this little feather edge right about here. Those are called the internal abdominal obliques. Where they end, another set of muscles, which are actually passing underneath them, uh, kind of cross over to the rectus abdominis, and those are called the transverse abdominals. That's those muscles right there. And you, you can kind of see their fibers up here above a little bit right there. Right there. Those are the transverse abdominals. And the word transverse means the fibers are running horizontally. So we have a vertical set, rectus abdominis. We have an oblique set on the outside, the external obliques. We have an oblique set on the inside, the internal obliques. And then we have the transverse abdominal muscles. And those are the muscles of the mink abdomen. Now we're going to shift upward to Sweetie Pie's sweet little chest. Oh yeah, that shows up very nicely. And let me just adjust the camera a hair there. That's good. Now Sweetie Pie's little chest has been very well dissected, if I say so myself. And we have this main muscle on the chest, which is fan-shaped here and here. It originates on the sternum, and it inserts over here on the humerus. That muscle is called the pectoralis major. You can see it stretching there. And its job is to pull the arms across the chest in the front. Its opposer is really the trapezius on the back and the latissimus dorsi. Now, the next muscle below it that forms a V muscle coming down to the linea alba, that's called the pectoralis minor. And you can free up that edge. You can see that edge just like that. And I can pass a probe under that quite nicely, that pec minor right there. That is actually, when you eat a chicken breast, you are actually eating pectoralis minor. That's the majority of the meat on a chicken chest, not breast. Chickens don't have that. Now, the next set of muscles are up here a little bit more toward the neck. Uh, we have this great big muscle who has an outside edge shown by this big blue vein, which is called the external jugular vein. And the inside, we can separate the two muscles and see the little trachea in there. Those are, those are the identifying landmarks around this muscle. This muscle is called the sternomastoid. It runs from the sternum, and there's another one called the clidomastoid, the sternum, all the way up to the mastoid process of the skull, giving it its name, sternomastoid. It's named by its origin and insertion. It's a good muscle and um, turns the head one side to the other, or if both contract at the same time, pulls a little head forward like that. Now let's do another muscle that's right here, and when I pin it on the practical, I always pin it from the chest view like this, and this is this muscle right here. It starts on the clavicle. You can kind of see the, the point there where it starts. There's a little fatty line there. It starts on the clavicle. You can feel the clavicle underneath, 
right there, and fill the clavicle right here. And that's called the clavobrachialis. The word clavo means it starts at the clavicle, and brachialis means it's going to the brachial region, which is the humerus, and it's inserting right in there. So it's working with the pec major to pull the arm upward and across the chest. Those are good muscles. Now we've got to turn the mink on her little side and see if we can chase down some head muscles. So we'll chase her down here. Oh, that looks good. There she is. The big muscle right up here is called the temporalis. Nice big muscle. The big muscle on the cheek is called the masseter. Then we have a few parotid glands in here that you'll have to know eventually. Yeah. One is called the mandibular gland and the other one is there's a, there's a big mandibular gland there. And so and that's the parotid gland. They're both salivary glands. So those are the two muscles that you need to know for the head, the temporalis and the masseter. The masseter is the chewing muscle. And the temporalis is the muscle that also works with chewing. It passes under the zygomatic arch and attaches to the um, mandible so that it pulls up and crushes. 